Pressure switches are one of the most misdiagnosed components in today's furnaces, and many of the furnace manufacturers will tell you that methods used in the past for testing pressure switches are simply inadequate. And actually, there really was no accurate way to test a pressure switch until the DDSM-1. The SDMN6 dual port manometer can test pressure switches. It has a built-in draft simulator. Similar to the SDMN5, it has a P1, P2 port. Those ports are used to test static pressures, such as external static pressures, total static pressures, pressure drops, and it can test gas pressures as well. It has a third port though. This third port is the pump port. You use that to test pressure switches. It has two jacks on the top. These jacks are for your leads to go to the pressure switch. To test pressure switches, the SDMN6 comes with three tubes, and in one of the tubes is a Y adapter with orifices built in. It also comes with a bleed port accessory. The bleed port accessory is used to test pressure switches with a low pressure rating or testing pressure switches with no bleed port. So to turn on the SDMN6, just go ahead and press the power button in for about a second until you see the display come up. And to turn the backlight on, simply press the power button in for about a, an instant. Now, if the, the numbers are not zeroed out, then you want to go ahead and press the zero button. And also make sure you're in inches of water column, because if you're not in inches of water column, just go ahead and press the unit button until you cycle through like this. I'm cycling through all the way back to inches of water column. That's what you want to use to measure uh, your um, static pressures and also to test pressure switches with. Now on the display, you'll see that there is a little indicator, and that indicator right now is above P2. To get it back to P1, just simply hit the P1, P2 button. Now what that is, is it's telling you that P1 is number one, it's the top number at this point, and you're measuring from P1, which is port one. So I'll switch to port two, and you'll see the indicator above port two, and you're measuring on, point, on the um, port two, and you'll see that on the top as well. So Wherever the indicator is, that's what you're measuring, and that's what the top number is. Now, this bottom number is the differential between the two ports, or the total of the two ports, depending on exactly what you're measuring. Okay, so also with the uh, SDMN6, it has a test button. Now, this test button actually turns the pump on. So... Uh, when you're going to perform a test with the SDMN6 on a pressure switch, you would use that button. And to increase or decrease the speed of the pump, you use the up and down arrows. Now, a hold, a hold button has a couple of features. Number one, if you're not in the test mode for a test button, then it'll freeze the screen. The other thing is, it's used to automatically capture the, the uh, number at which, the pressure at which it, it actually closes or opens. So when you turn the pump on, you'll see the green light, and when the pump, when the pressure switch is actually closed, you'll see a red light above the word closed. When it's open, that light will be out. So let's go ahead and test a pressure switch. Now this particular pressure switch, I'm going to show you this is, this is an inch and a half pressure switch. It's 1.50. But you'll note that it does say WCPF, which is inches of water column pressure fall. That means it's supposed to open at 1.50. Okay, uh, it should close around there as well. But you have a uh, a 10% variance in there, so it can actually, if you, it, it would still be okay if it uh, closed at uh, 1.65 or opened at 1.65 or 1.35. So it's, that would be within 10% of this switch. Also, on this particular switch, you'll see that it only has two terminals. It has a common and a normally open. And those are the terminals that you would use to test the switch. Some switches have a third terminal. And you can see on this one, it's printed on the switch, but it's not exactly, there is no uh, terminal for it. And in that case, that would be a normally closed. You do not want to use that, even on a three terminal switch so you would just use, again, the common and normally open. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to test this switch. But before I do, I wanted to point something out to you. The uh, pressure switches, most of them, have um, little uh, bleed ports in them. And this one is right here. It's a tiny little bleed port. 
Now, that little bleed port is used to help regulate um, when the switch opens and closes. And on this one, you can see a little moisture build up. So this one had, has had moisture in it. Very important that you do not test a pressure switch with water in it. Just replace it. Obviously, it's not the first time water's been in it, and you don't know what is going on on the inside. It is metal, after all, and coating could get on the uh, diaphragm. So I'm going to go ahead and set this right here for now. That is very powerful magnets that I'm using to attach to this. Now on the uh, tubing, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two tubes that do not have the Y on it. We're going to use those. So we're going to put that on P1. And we're going to take the other one without the Y on it, obviously, and put that on pump. We're going to be measuring P1, so make sure the indicator is on P1. Okay, and on the other end, what we're going to do is go ahead and plug one onto the Y and plug the other one into the other side of the Y. And it doesn't matter which one goes where, but it should like this, look like this when you're done. We're also going to take our leads and we're going to plug them into the top of the um, SDMN6. And it doesn't matter which, which uh, lead goes into uh, which so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our electrical leads and we're going to plug them onto the common and we're going to plug it onto the normally open. Obviously this only has those two ports, I mean those two um, terminals, so that's where we're going to plug them. Okay, now before we connect this uh, tubing to the pressure switch, we're going to go ahead and make sure this is zero out again. And then we are going to, let me move this out of the way real quick. And then we are going to uh, go ahead and start the pump. So we're going to press test. You'll notice it's going through a countdown. It's actually warming up the pump. And it starts off high and it starts to decrease in its speed. Now when we hook this up, we could actually use the arrows to uh, increase the speed or decrease the speed depending on uh, where we are on the switch. So if we hook it up and the red LED is closed, that means our pressure is a little bit higher so we'll want to start with our test going down. In this instance, I'm going to go ahead and plug this in to show you what it does. And you plug it on. So we're going to go up. And we'll take this up in increments of the incline, or increasing our uh, pump speed. And we see it was 1.67. Now, what we're going to do is take it down and see where it did open. And it was uh, 1.64 or 1.63, basically. But we want to capture the exact reading of when that did uh, close and open. We simply hit the hold button. Now pressing the hole button, you'll see the hole indicator flash. So at this point, we want to go ahead and increase the speed of the pump. Now you can take it in increments like we are doing, and pressing the uh, up arrow, you'll see INC is increase the speed. And we'll see exactly the moment that it does close, and that closed at 1.69. So we're going to note that reading of 1.69. And now we are going to release the hold and that will completely release our capture and we're going to press the hold button again and we're going to uh, start our um, decreasing in the uh, pump. So let's go ahead and go down and like I said you can, if you're far off you can just go ahead and hold the button down and it'll take you really fast. So you can do this really quick. Or you can take it in increments, so I'm just showing you in increments exactly what's going on. And we see that it captured at 1.63. Um, what's really handy about the manual mode is for testing a, a diaphragm. So let's just say this was uh, where it was closing, which was at um, uh, 1.69. If you were to take this up to 1.69, and where the switch actually did close and you leave it there for about 30 seconds. If the LED goes out, 
your diaphragm in there has a hole or a crack in it. And that's a pretty simple test. That's what I like to use the manual mode for. Or if I want to make sure, you know, or just fine tune my findings. But for the, for the most part, I would use auto capture mode. It's real simple to do. Um, press hold and then press and hold the up arrow till the light uh, comes on and it closes the switch and um, just uh, press hold to release it, press hold again and go down and until the light goes off. Real simple, real easy to do.